Hey everyone, my name is Nico Economos. I'm a freshman in aerospace engineering at the University of Michigan. So for some fun facts about me, I love to water ski. I like hiking. I like building and flying RC planes and I love the beach. And I'm gonna be talking to you guys a little bit about my experience in STEM, specifically in college and some advice for you guys. So first, as you may have guessed, I'm interested in space planes, space exploration, all things in that realm. And I can't point to any one specific event where my passion for aerospace was sparked. I was always interested in space, the cosmos, flight, etc. But I do remember visiting the Udvar Hazy Air and Space Museum when I was younger, which is a museum right near my house in Virginia. It has a ton of historical planes. I remember seeing the SR-71 Blackbird, the fastest plane in existence at, at its time. And the Discovery Space Shuttle, which made countless trips from Earth, uh, from Earth to space. And I remember seeing how awesome they looked, how awesome the things they were doing were, and wanting to do something like that myself. So that's kind of where it began. And I, and I began, and I explored throughout high school. For example, club I joined, UAV Club. It's a plane that we built, an RC plane. Um, and that's a plane that I built myself for a project on the left. So throughout high school, I, I joined clubs and, and I did my own research and, and I found that I really did have a passion for aerospace. And that's why I know that I'm studying it today. But some of you guys may not be so sure. You may not know what field within STEM you wanna join or you may not be sure uh, whether you wanna join STEM at all. Um, but the best advice that I could give for figuring out where your passions lie is number one, to reach out. Reaching out to people that have experience in the field that you're interested in or you think you might have an interest in is one of the best ways to get to know it yourself. Because if you reach out, you can get involved in the things that they're involved in or you can hear firsthand their experience working with it. And I think just having a firsthand um, account of the field from their eyes is a great way to get to know it and whether or not it seems like something you might want to pursue. Uh, for example, I reached out to one of my friends who was in TJ UAV club and that's how I actually got involved in it. And second of all, I would like to say, take risks. You know, you, you never know what you will or won't be interested in. But if you only do things that you're comfortable with, you will never discover, um, you might never discover a passion that you didn't know you had. So for example, reaching out to that friend was a risk because I, I wasn't sure whether or not he would let me join the club or not, but obviously he did. And it was a very positive experience. So take risks. Now, some of you guys may be wondering uh, why STEM in the first place? Well, the first answer to that question is, is pretty obvious. As society evolves, become, it'll become more dependent on technology just because that's the direction that society is moving. Um, but also it will become more dependent on critical thinking and innovation, which are both things that STEM fields provide by working with them. So I would also like to say that Working in a STEM field affects every field globally, not just a STEM focused one. So for example, the bottom right, that's Starship, which is the project of SpaceX. The work that SpaceX is doing in Starship doesn't just affect SpaceX or the aerospace industry. It'll one day affect the global supply chain. It's starting to affect things like tourism, which we're already seeing with Virgin Galactic. So working in a STEM field is a great way to not just have an impact in your field, but to have a global impact, which is something that I know a lot of people would like. And lastly, I think the biggest reason to get involved in STEM is if you're curious, if you're a curious person, I think that you can excel in STEM no matter what. The only thing that being successful in STEM requires is being curious, having a desire to learn and having a willingness to work and to learn. If you have all those things, uh, you are bound to be successful because STEM is to me, learning how things work, how they fit into our world and how we can make things better. And if you're curious, you can do all of that. Now, lastly, uh, as, as I mentioned in the beginning, I'm a freshman, so I just finished my first semester at Michigan. And I would like to share some things that I learned. So first, I think it's really important to keep in mind that adjustment takes time. My first semester, well, I stepped into a new environment socially and academically. And at the start of the semester, uh, I was a little bit confused. I wasn't really in my groove like I was in high school. But keeping in mind that you're not going to be 
100% right at the beginning and that you need some time to adjust is really important because if you're really hard on yourself, um, that's gonna hinder your happiness. Also, I'd like to say, embrace the new independence that being in college offers. You know, you have to take agency over where you go, how you do your schoolwork, who you spend your time with, how you eat, and all that new independence can get a little bit overwhelming at times, but I think that having the independence leads to lots of opportunity for personal growth. So keep that in mind and, and lean into independence as opposed to stepping back from it. And speaking of stepping back, uh, remember to take a step back sometimes. I think a lot of us focus in the future, which is a good thing, having your mind in the future, but that means we also forget to focus on the present and living in the moment. It sounds a little bit cheesy, but living in the present is to me one of the best ways to live a happy life. Um, and especially in the first semester of college, it's such a hectic time, it's easy to get caught up and, um, and lose focus in the present. But that's something I think that we should all remember to try to do. And lastly, like I said before, take risks, not just academically, but also socially, you know, go to that event with your friend that you weren't sure you were gonna enjoy you were going to enjoy. Maybe talk to someone that you wouldn't. And I think you'll find that more often than not, taking those risks leads to very positive experiences. So that's all I have for today. Thank you guys so much for listening and I'll see you later.